Yo, 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 this is your boy Chief Eli, and now you tuned in to another episode of Talk to Your Boy Podcast Show, episode 25. How y'all doing, motherfuckers? I hope y'all doing great. I know I am. You know, that shit was fucking up the last time. And I'm having major difficulties right now. But you know me, I work it as I go, man. I ain't got time for that shit. Ain't nothing to stop this show right here. Ain't nothing. We got too much haters already. Niggas hated on the fucking versus battle with Tyson Dominicano and and the Apex. You know, niggas was hating. I ain't gonna talk. I ain't gonna talk too much about that. Cause fuck them niggas. They can't even give them power. You know what I'm saying? I gotta open up Modelo. You know what I'm saying? But hey, it's beer. Beer's beer. I got some Patron right there. You know what I'm saying? Again, your boy Chief Eli. I ain't got no notes. I don't need notes. Everything that I, that happened in my life is up here. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I take notes because I be like, oh shit, I want to talk about this on the show. You know what I'm saying? But fuck that, man. I ain't had time for that shit. I'd rather talk to y'all straight up. Mm. <sighs> alright, it's alright. Tastes like fucking beer. How y'all doing? Did y'all see the Tyson and Roy Jones fight? What do y'all think about that? I honestly think Tyson won. Even though those hammers was coming slow as fuck. Shit, I don't took a sip of my drink. He took a hit of my joint and he still didn't hit fucking Roy Jones. You know what I'm saying? That shit was more slow, but it was powerful. You know what I'm saying? Tyson... Couple of them going fast though. Yeah, but you know we had a, su- a successful uh, versus battle with Tyson Dominicano in the Apex, Young Flex and Rike E. It was crazy. It was fun. I, I, I saw it from home though. I ain't sure. I saw it from the crib, but it was fun. You know what I'm saying? I was smoking out, watching the whole shit. You know what I'm saying? And just. Smoking a hot and watching the whole shit. Because I was really fucking pissed the fuck off, my nigga. I had a problem with a sassy boy. Sass boy. Only a few people know what I mean. It's sassy. Sassy. <sighs> yeah. Nigga want to slap the shit out of somebody, you know what I'm saying? But not to ruin the dog show because I know I'm to fuck some shit up that the man from the place would be like, nah, close the shit down. Nah. Let's not talk about that negative shit here any fucking way. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Shout out to my boy Chill Will. He just got married. You know what I'm saying? Vegas. Salute, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I wonder what you feel like when you get married. Shit. I'm too cool for that shit. Especially with these. You know, I love my girl, my nigga. But my girl, she is a girl. So she has these certain girl defects. And, you know, I don't want to say that my girl is a cunt, but she got some cut shit. Sometimes she do some cut shit. Some people don't understand what cut mean. A cunt means can't understand normal thinking. Now, show me one girl that you know that understands normal thinking. Because I don't know none. They be normal for the one woman, but when the shit bothers them, they stupid as kicking. Like, like, really? That's what you think? And it be some outrageous shit. It never fell. Every girl I've been with, every girl. It never fell. I don't want to get into detail. Because my girl do watch the show. 
And she's the executive producer. Uh, you know, Christmas coming. So, it's the season for all y'all ho ho hoes to be jiggling balls. Get ready. It's coming. It's going to be a lot of white snow. Not in Miami, but y'all don't know what I mean. Let y'all it's the season for the ho ho hoes to be jingling bows. It's gonna be a white Christmas. Yeah, but you know, nigga just here vibing, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the other day I was talking to my dog. You know what I'm saying? You already know when I start a story like that, it's crazy. We was on live. You know what I'm saying? He was telling me that you know he got a mansion. Now mind you, dog. This nigga here, like, he surprised me, bro. That's how that you know. Some of y'all motherfuckers that say y'all can't do shit, y'all be talking a lot of shit. This nigga here, like, I swear to God, like, nigga, we all hit legs. We were robbing bitches and everything. But you know there's some of those niggas in the hood that be like, they ain't got no off switch. Like, and the shit they do, you can't believe they did it. Because who they did it to and... And they were just doing all types of shit. Well, this nigga here was like, like all types of shit. Nigga robbing everybody. Everything, nigga. If he want to take your shit, he'll take it. This is my dog now. This is my OG. He my OG. You know, he my nigga, uh, 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 Josh's older brother. You know what I'm saying? We call him Rocky, nigga. Or Black. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> this nigga was out of hand. Like, he was destiny. You know, shot one of the homies and shit, and, and all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? This nigga here was bugged out, like loose. And the nigga doing better than the majority of all my homeboys, my nigga. Like, legally, this motherfucker got his own truck, and he drives in and out of town. Like, man, this man got a mansion in fucking Georgia. He got all types of shit, shit that... He couldn't even dream of having when we were young, man. Like, like when I when I told him I seen it, all this shit, I was like, my brother, man, you made it, my nigga. Congratulations, bro. He like, yeah, man. He said it just like this. I made more than a lot of these rappers, and I believe him. Shit, I believe him. That man average for at least like forty racks a month, eighty racks. Shit, I believe him. A lot of these rappers ain't seen that. You know what I'm saying? But man, he doing great. He doing fucking great, man. Shout out to my nigga Rocky, my nigga. He is a real epitome of, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, he is the truth of epitome of niggas from the hood, my nigga. Like, what you supposed to do with your life. You know, he fucked up with his life in the early days. But he, he, he took advantage of the situation, noticing that it wasn't too long to turn around. And my nigga, he turned around. This man don't been traveling to Jamaica, my nigga. He don't went to France, Dominican Republic, Colombia, all types of shit, dog. Like, this man be going all over the place. But he got the duck. He can do it. <sighs> yeah, man. Enough about my dog, Rocky Salute. You know what I'm saying? Nigga ain't here to pull on your dick. You're doing great. So, look. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we were talking. Like I was saying, me and my homeboy, we were talking, right? And we were talking about, you know, eating bitches out. You know, some we just talk about certain things. You know what I'm saying? And he was telling me that, you know, when a bitch coming. And you know you're doing a great job when the bitch, when she come and she roll her eyes back. I said, roll her eyes back? Shit. That's all right, no. That ain't really when you know she, you're doing a great job. Because I make a bitch roll her eyes back while I'm licking her pussy. Now when she coming. So you're doing a horrible job. You're like, what you mean? I said, nigga. That bitch look like she break dancing when she come when I lick that pussy. Like, She doing one of those numbers, my nigga. Breakdance. And her leg be twitching and shit. 
Nigga, have you ever ate a bitch out and she came and put you in the scissor lock, my nigga? Have you ever been through that kind of shit? Nigga, you, nigga, my nigga, especially if she got a good nut, nigga, you ain't breaking that scissor lock, fool. You might as well call it a day. You might check out, depending how long that nut. If she has an organ, you're dead. You better hope it's a quick nut when she let you go to breathe. But when she put that, that snap of leg lock on her, that scissor lock, nigga, you ain't coming out of there alive, fool. Facts. You're not coming out of there alive. We still going? We still going. You're not coming out of there alive. You know what I'm saying? Shit, nigga. It'll be like, what's that nigga name? David Carradine? They found that nigga home butt nigga. That's a crazy ass crap. This nigga like to. Remember I told you about bitches that like, like being choked? When they're about to come and shit. Well, this cracker died just like that, but he hung himself. And they found that nigga hung. Then they found the hole and said, Go, man, that nigga did it to his son. He just wanted me to suck his dick while he was just hanging, like, close to death. And the number too good that he could, you know, he tightened up. The Roman, he just died. But damn, you know what it's getting? Kind of, it's not a bad way of dying. Like, he died. With a bitch's mouth on his dick. That's a great way to die. <laughs> Don't y'all think? Niggas die every day by getting shot up, by getting canceled, you know, stabbed, car accident, all types of shit. How bad is it dying while getting your dick sucked? Damn, that's a good way to go out this motherfucker. <laughs> you nutted and everything. Like you came and then you died. Shit. I wouldn't mind going out like that when when I'm a little older, but not by uh, a city of, uh, I forgot that word. When you choke yourself or some shit. It's not suicide. But it is suicide. But it's some shit they call it a fit a six fifty eight a sixty eight eight, whatever the word the fucking mean, you know what it is. If you know how to pronounce it, you know what that shit means. And you know what the word I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? That cracker there like fuck that the cracker was like one of them wild ass females, man, and like like choking himself to just a bust a nut. And, and he was into, he, like, he had, like, you know, the ex-wives and shit started coming out, saying that this nigga liked to get tied up, nipple clamping, and he liked to get hurt. He liked to get hurt. Bondage. That's what they call it, bondage. <clears throat> Sorry. I can do the fuck I want, nigga. Let's talk to your boy, podcast host, hosted by Chief Eli, executive producer, Cynthia Arbitrary. Nigga, that's my lady. Nigga, that's awesome. <clears throat> I burp and shit and bomb it all. Whatever I want in this motherfucker. Fuck you. I said, excuse me. I see why these Mexicans be drinking this beer right now. After a while, it tastes pretty good. And they get too fucked up pretty quick. Shout out to my Mexican brothers, man. Love you, man. I love all my Latinos, man, Chilenos, Cubanos, Hondureños, Salvadoreños. Did I say that word right? Gente de Paraguay, Uruguay, you know what I'm saying? Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Panama, Mexico again, you know what I'm saying? Puerto Rico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Spain. Give Spain a shout out. You know what I'm saying? Because the truth, y'all the crackers of the fucking Chico world. I know that, right? But we won't leave it like that. Remember, the Spaniards are from Europe. They Europeans. They were the ones that were evil back then. Like the white folks. They were Spaniards and Europeans and Yeah, that part. 
My nigga, let me tell y'all something. I don't know if y'all ever been to Puerto Rico. <sighs> nigga, like I was getting bit by mosquitoes here when it was summertime. You know, summertime mosquito fuck you up here, whatever in Miami. But I ain't shit, man. I've been to Puerto Rico, my nigga. I remember the first time I slept in Puerto Rico in my dog's tiger script. This motherfucker here, hold on. I gotta keep my phone on deck. Ah, oh, fuck it. This motherfucker here gave me a fat. There's no AC over there, man. They ain't got no central AC. Everything over there is old. So this motherfucker gave me a fat. I put that fat in front of my bed. Can the mosquitoes over there? They ain't no fucking joke, dog. Like, try to sleep like this and all that. They gonna fuck you up, nigga. So I put the fan in front of my bed, right? But a nigga had to sleep like a missile, man, nigga. I had to sleep like this. Like, I had to sleep like this. Like, wherever the wind was blowing, I had to keep my body within the wind range. You know what I'm saying? Because the minute, like, I, I, like, a, like let's say I'm like a missile, right? And they say, you know, I do this. Uh-oh. There's no wind blowing over here by my by my elbows and shit. All oh, that shit gonna get bitten up by mosquitoes and shit, dog. So you have to sleep like this, literally like this. So that you know, and then like the next day, I think I don't know, a couple of days later, I went to go take a shower. I'm taking a shower. I see like two mosquitoes by the fucking by the window of the shower. So I'm trying to kill them, right? I kill one. One got away with him. But damn, I'm taking a shower, my nigga. Next thing you know. I fucking get, feel like I get bit in my ass by mosquitoes and shit, dog. So I check my ass, like, what the fuck? And I'm smash. And when I look back there, I see, like, two more mosquitoes flying around. Like, these niggas are gangsta, dog. How the fuck they bite your ass and water just hitting my, hitting my skin? Like, I'm, li like, how the fuck, nigga? Like, what they do just... Kamikaze dive into that skin to your ass cheek, nigga. Like they dive into my ass cheek, like it just like backed up. Like they no shit don't break, my nigga. These are some gangsters, dog. Like mosquitoes in the Caribbean are gangsters, nigga. I don't know how it is in DR and in Cuba and Haiti and Jamaica and all that, but I know how it is in PR. Them motherfuckers gangsters, nigga. They don't care about no fucking water. I bet you put the mosquitoes in the snow, they still fuck you up. They'll go through your bubble goose. They'll go through the windbreakers. Anything. Them niggas over there gangsters, nigga. They made out of, they fucking shit made out of concrete or something, nigga. Because it's just like, how, nigga, I'm in the shower, nigga. Water hitting me hard. I'm not in Cuba, nigga. We got pressure in Puerto Rico, nigga. Water hitting me hard, nigga. Like, like how he does here in the state, nigga. The mosquitoes in the states ain't that gangsta nigga be in the shower trying to bite your ass, nigga. Nah, they, 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 they just don't do that. Once you around water, they're like, all right, I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? But these niggas over that oh shit, nigga, you act like we finna run away, nigga. You just made it easier for it. Like that's lubricant for them niggas. Like seriously, to them, that's like lubricant. Like you just made it easier, nigga. But she gonna slip in there. I'm like, dang, these mosquito gangs, nigga, they bite your ass in the fucking rain, in the water, nigga. You could be underwater, nigga, to bite your ass, nigga. It's facts. Yo, rest in peace to my nigga, Umin and Daniel, my nigga. Those are what my two soldiers in PR. I miss them niggas. I used to go over there, you know, hang out in PR with them niggas, you know. Everybody used to always tell me, yo, Chief, you hanging out with the wrong niggas. But I tell them all the time, my nigga, y'all didn't meet my homeboys back at home. Oh, this nigga wanted for murder. Oh, yeah? By who, the police? Nah, in the streets and then. A lot of my niggas are wanted for murder, too. Like, niggas trying to kill them, too, for shit they did. But you want to stop hanging with these niggas? It just... It's just something that it never scared me and it never like, you know what I'm saying? Like it never stopped me from doing anything, nigga. Shit, nigga. I hung out with my dog, I hung out with my dog. You know what I'm saying? But we hung out, we used to smoke out, <clears throat> I wake up, I go meet them in the project. They used to live in Monserrate projects, right there over there on Monserrate Avenue, Carolina, Puerto Rico, nigga. That's where they was at. So we was always in the projects. <clears throat> So I would wake up like seven in the morning, walk to the projects, get my, got my, get my bud, go meet up with these niggas, we smoking. 
We chilling, we vibing, we, we rapping, we drinking, we do all that good shit that we do here. But over there, the vibe is different, you know what I'm saying? It's not like here, over here, like, you know, you get fucked with the police every now and then, but the police scared of going to projects over there. But anyway, everybody's strapped. Everybody. Every time I was around these niggas, they had glax, nigga. But I don't know what happened this day. Now, mind you, my boy Tiger told me, yo, Chief, I'm finna go to Puerto Rico. Me and him said, uh, uh, and then he told me, you want to go? I said, hell yeah, fuck it. Let's, I'm going to buy my ticket. He said, all right. Next thing you know, he called me back. He told me the ticket is the price such and such. But he told me just like this. He was like, hey, bro, I'm going to go to Puerto Rico first, right? Let me hang out with my family and shit. And then you go to Puerto Rico next week. And then me and you will go fucking, you know, do our music and shit. I was like, fuck it. Because he's from Puerto Rico. He got, he had, at that time, he had his kids over there, his wife. And he was just living in the States trying to grind. So I was like, all right, fuck it. Go ahead. Do your thing. So he went, you know what I'm saying? And I told him, bro, I feel like really going over there. Because I know his family. I can stay over there. But the thing is that every time I was around his family, like, yo, Tiger, like, come on, let's go to the studio. We got shit to do. And, you know, it was like. It was a mission because he tried to do both, you know what I'm saying? So this time he had opportunity to go chill with his family first. And then next week it was all studio time and shit like that. But, you know, I told him I could wait the next week. I just want to, you know, chill out on the block, you know, chill. But I get him all of them. He's like, man, I keep telling you to stop hanging with these niggas, man. I'm telling you. And Caramalo, my dog Caramalo was supposed to come with me. So next thing you know, I said, man, whatever. So, three days later, give me a second, three days later, this motherfucker calls, Tiger, he calls me, he tells me, yo, chief, guess what happened? I said, what happened, bro? I'm thinking that I'm not going to go over there, or something happened between him and his wife that she divorced, or they're breaking up, or some shit, I don't know, some shit, shit always happened between two, him, to him and his ex-wife at that time, they was always arguing and shit. So I'm like, what happened, bro? I can't go over there or something. He's like, man, you could come. But um, shit, they just killed your two homeboys. I'm like, who? They killed that yeah, they on me. I said, nah, bro, I just spoke to this man yesterday. I literally spoke to him a day before telling him, look, bro, I was supposed to be here this week, but I'm going to be the next week because... Tiger want to chill with his family. Like, I got that loud. And he even told me to bring some Miami shit because he loved Miami. We had Crippy at that time. And they got Crippy there over there too, but it just, it was two different tastes. So he always told me, yo, bring me at least a quarter of that Crippy from us. I, said, I got you, nigga. You better bless me with that quarter of Crippy from over there. He's like, I got you, nigga. I got you. Because he always, he had that fire. So next thing you know, we, uh, we, uh, whatchamacallit, um, oh, Tiger calls me and tells me that, yo, they just killed both of them in the project. Nigga, each one of them got 30 shots apiece. It was three niggas that came and AK their ass up. They call it La Borracara, the face eraser. You know what I'm saying? They're choppers. Over there, they call it the face eraser. It erases your face and shit. So they erase your face and shit, you know, and, um, and, um, yeah, man, they got killed, man, so. Those was my niggas. You know, when I went to Puerto Rico, it wasn't the same because I used to go to those projects just to chill with them and I used to knock on his door just to chill with them. And, and people always told me, my nigga, like, stay away from the niggas. And um, I'm glad, I'm just glad that Tiger went to uh, Puerto Rico first and told me to chill till next week. Because to tell you the truth, that could have been me and Caramaro. And that would have been fucked up if I would have took out him out to his first visit and we get shot up. He's Colombian. My dog got him out was Colombian. And he never been in Puerto Rico. It would have been fucked up if I took him to his first visit to the island and we get shot up. You know, we get killed. It would have been fucked up. Because Puerto Rico is really not like that. Puerto Rico, well, yeah, people get killed. But I'm trying to say that it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not. It's bad because the projects 
Oh, uh, in war and shit, a lot of projects that at war, they got a lot of drug, big time drug dealers that be beefing for turf and shit like that. But as far as bad for the people that lives in Puerto Rico, it's not. It just, you hear a lot, a lot about the shooting and killing, and then, you know, people cry, people moan, because a lot of them be their kids and shit like that, but your kids is in the street. I mean, since I was a kid, I always was told not to sell drugs, because you could go to jail, get killed, get robbed, get shot, get stabbed, get all this shit, bad shit happen to you. I always understood that, that if you play that game, this shit can happen to you. Everybody goes in that game thinking that none of that shit's going to happen to them. I'm telling you, everybody, everybody. Like, like I even see punk-ass, bitch-ass niggas in that game thinking that nothing can happen to them. That they can't get robbed, they can't get shot. The police, they heard stories, but they, they just think that it can't happen to them. That the person that got robbed, stabbed, shot, whatever, they were just lacking. They were slipping. They were just not on their P's and Q's, not on their ten toes. That... It won't happen to them. Oh, that they different. I got brain. It, I heard it all, including myself. You know, when I was young, I'm not gonna sit here and sit my side up from these people. That I, I was talking just like that as well, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I never got robbed. I never got shot. I never got stabbed. Got shot at, and a person tried to pull out a knife one time. I beat the shit out of his ass. Because it was just a fucking bullshit ass night. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> I never I never got shot. I never got shot. I never got robbed on the block. Nothing. Because I was, we had a squad, man. We was dead. We was dangerous, my nigga. We was dangerous. And, um, and, um, yeah, my nigga. Facts. So, but I knew, <clears throat> I knew. And even though I used to always say that, man, this shit ain't gonna happen to me and this and that, because, because I know how the we were set up. We was, it, it was just too many blocks. It was too many blocks to deal with. It was too many blocks to deal with. You know what I'm saying? So you couldn't just go to every, you couldn't just go to one person. You had to go to every block and rob somebody because we all was connected. And we all knew if, if, if something happened on two or third, 202, 201, 200, 100, all these people getting called not to, to blast or shoot at that car that's leaving the block, the, the neighborhood. So you got to make it out. You got to make it out the neighborhood because they're going to get called each block. They're going to be on the lookout for you. You do some dirt like that. That's what I'm saying. It was like that in the 90s. At least where it was set up in my neighborhood. <clears throat> so facts, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? But everybody knows when they come into that game, they got to expect the worst. You got to expect the worst when you come into that game. But anyway, I'm getting major calls right now because I really got to do some things. I got a lot of shit to do. So I got to close this episode. But I want to thank y'all for watching. And please, if you can, I ain't asking for much. A dollar, two, maybe 50 cents even, dog. Dump it in the cash app, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I work hard for this shit, dog. You don't know what I... I, I film it myself. I set up everything. And all this shit, my nigga. And if you enjoying the show, a dollar or two ain't gonna hurt on the cash app. The link in the description. You know what I'm saying? Salute. Thank y'all for watching. Episode 25. Thank you for watching. Talk to your boy. Podcast show. chi 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 -hoo. I'm out, motherfucker. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.